it seems that it's not easy because we're used to just pushing people to do things, telling people what to do. And I want to say this, to motivate people by the grace of God, some people think motivated by the grace of God, some people just don't move. Now if they don't move, they don't obey God, is their problem. It's, you know, do we have to be like oxen, have to be beaten to obey? If they're beaten to obey, they won't, uh, they won't be doing it from the hearts. And they won't be able to do it well. And they will be pushing other people and forcing other people. Actually, you know, if we have the grace of God, we ourselves, our words will be full of grace. You know, your life is very precious. Your life can be used by God greatly. And uh, so, I hope you all believe that. Our life is very precious. And the life of every single person is very precious. So if people believe that, and we want to make the best use of our life, then our life can go higher and higher. But if people are forced to do it, they won't go high. They only serve God when they are pushed to do it. When someone is watching. When no one is watching, they don't have the motivation. But if we see the grace of God, you know, for me, I see His grace, His love, I enjoy His love. I have the continual motivation. I don't need any motivation from anyone. I was not motivated to serve God by anyone's words. It all came from God, from His grace, His love. Now, how do we say words of grace to people? Uh, in the assignment, it says that to encourage people to pray and also encourage people to uh, serve God. Remember this. The motivation of the grace of God must be specific related to that area. For instance, to motivate people to serve, uh, to pray. Now someone put this down. I, let me just say, uh, as an example, someone put down the grace of God there. We are saved by grace through faith, not by works. Now this is true, this is grace, but it's not related to prayer. Mm. Listen again. In order to motivate people to pray, we don't just use any grace of God in the Bible. We use it specific related to prayer. Related to prayer, what is God's grace and plan? God's grace is that He has a wonderful plan before we pray. He has wonderful blessings prepared for us before we pray. And He knows our needs, so He knows what to give us. So He has all this prepared. And when anyone comes to Him with a sincere heart, God sees that right away. And God knows this person. If this person has a real heart to pray to God and know that God is full of blessing, God knows His heart. And then whenever He prays, God answers His prayer and God gives Him power. Now in the Bible we saw that some people's prayer is much more powerful. Moses. Samuel, David, Peter, Paul, you know, their prayer is very powerful because they know God's nature, they love God, they're dedicated to God, their prayer is much more powerful. They know how wonderful God is. You know, our motivation of prayer is not just to say, I have to pray more, I have to pray harder, I have to pray harder. Now, some people thought it's just praying harder, praying harder, then God will answer them. Actually, it's knowing who God is. Like the uh, Canaan woman, she said that, yes, it's true. Jesus said, the dogs do not give the food to the dogs. But the woman said, yes, the dogs don't give the food to the dogs. But the dogs will also eat the crumbs that falls down from the master's table. So it shows that she has a heart to say, God's blessings is all good. And I just want some of this grace is sufficient for me. So she has this belief in God's nature. And when she has that faith, then God answered her prayer. And then her daughter was healed. So she knows God's nature. Now some people, they could be crying out, yelling all the time, Lord, revival, revival, revival. But when they don't know the heart of God, it's just 
crying because God wants us to first know how wonderful He is. This uh, Canaan woman knew how wonderful God is, how wonderful Jesus is. And then the, the uh, centurion knows that Jesus has authority. He, he knows that Jesus is not just someone common. So when we know God's nature, then we have authority. You know, actually, I have so many things that happened to me before I prayed. God already planned because God knows our heart. Now, some people told me, I have this sickness and a second sickness, or I have headache, stomachache, and my family problem, all this. I said, no matter how many things you tell me, I pray for you the same way. You don't have to tell me all this. God already knows. But when we believe in God's grace and we love God and believe God is blessing us and we just want to follow God, we seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. See, remember, Jesus' key to answering prayer is not that you have to pray very, very powerful. It's the faith in God and the dedication to God and the submission to God. So, the grace of God related to prayer is, is you must start with God first. God, don't start with people. Start with God. God knows our needs. God loves us. God cares about us. He has the best plan in our life. And all this, when we trust in Him and pray to Him, will be given to us. And then when we seek God's kingdom and His righteousness, and all this will be given to us. So, now I don't worry about anything in my life. I don't worry about anything. In my prayer, actually I don't pray much for my needs. I don't pray much for my needs. I pray for the people's needs. That, and I also pray for the ministry that I can bless more people. I don't pray for my needs. Because I know God knows my needs. He wants to bless me with whatever I need. So I hope you have this. So when you talk about the grace of God in prayer, is that He already has a plan. He already has, knows our prayer, knows our needs. And then He will give to us the moment we open our heart to Him. And actually when people seek God's kingdom, He already planned to give all this to you. Okay, so that's the first part. And the second part about motivation to serve God. The motivation to serve God is just to tell you, go serve God, go dedicate yourself. You know, some people wrote that. Just what you do, what you do, what you do. It's declaring that. God have compassion on all people. When God sees all the lost people, God's heart is hurt. God has great compassion on all people. So, He wants to save more people. And whenever He sees one person who has the heart to save people, God is very, very happy. And God will honor that person, God will bless that person, God will provide for this person, God will give him strength, give him wisdom, everything he needs to serve God. Because God looks for people who really want to serve God. So when we have this heart, we understand God's heart. His heart is to save more people. So we understand this grace. His heart is to save more people. And then when anyone has this heart, God is very happy. So think of God. I notice many people is very hard to talk about grace. It's always saying you have to trust God, obey God, preach the gospel, and submit to God. All this what people do. Because this is human thinking. What I do, what I do. Let me tell you, it's not what we do that changes the world. It's not what we do that changes the world. It's what God does that changes the world, right? Say it with me. It's not what we do that changes the world. It's not what God does that changes the world. what God does that changes the world. So I know how good God is when I say this. So I know how good God is. So I know how good God is. And I know His wonderful grace to all people. And I know His wonderful grace to all people. And I know that He is happy with anyone who serves Him. And I know that He is happy with anyone who serves Him. Then I have the motivation to serve God. And God is happy with me. 
So when I motivate people to serve God, I don't say this. You have to serve God. You have to obey. Submit to God. Pray every day. Read the Bible. Now this we tell too. We tell them too. But the first of all, they need to understand. God has, now say this with me, the motivation to serve God, encourage people to serve God. God has compassion on all people. God has compassion on all people. When God looks at the people, when God looks at the people, when he saw these lost people, when he saw these lost people, God's heart is hurt. God's heart is hurt. He's looking for people who are willing to be sent. He's looking for people who are willing to be sent. So when he sees someone who wants to serve God, so when he sees someone who wants to serve God, God is very happy. God is very happy. And God will honor this person. And God will honor this person. God will provide for this person. God will provide for this person. God will give him strength and wisdom. God will give him strength and wisdom. God will open a way for his ministry. God will open a way for his ministry. And he can bless many people. And he can bless many people. Do you want to be a person like that? Can you see the difference? It's not just you have to do it. You have to do it. You have to do it. It's see how wonderful God is to know God's heart. His heart is full of compassion. Okay? And whenever we talk about the grace of God, it has to be related to the topic. For instance, okay? Another topic. God can give us... Uh, okay, this uh, motivate people to receive spiritual gifts from God. If we have another topic, encourage people to hunger for spiritual gifts from God. What is the grace that motivates us to hunger for the gifts of God, the spiritual gifts of God? What are some of the motivation of God's grace to encourage, to motivate people to hunger for the spiritual gifts. Can anyone say anything? Can you think of the grace of God related to Him giving us spiritual gifts? Can anyone think of? So we have to change our mentality. Think of God. Anyone? Yes. Speak loudly please. In Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, speak loud. To how to motivate people to, to hunger for spiritual gift. Firstly, I will make them to understand that God loves you and He wants to use you. He wants to see you do great things. And you can only do those great things when you have the Holy Spirit. And that will make you to desire the Holy Spirit. Okay. Because you desire, you know that God loves you and He wants you to do great things. Okay. But you can only do it by the Holy Spirit. Okay, that's true. What He said is true. Very good. That God loves you and wants to give you spiritual gifts that you can bless more people. Okay? So that's one area of grace. But there are other. Anyone think of it? Okay, now let me, yes, go ahead. So I'm just trying to help you to use your brain to think more and in God to ask for wisdom. Okay. Yeah, uh, I will also say that uh, in God loving you, God gave you a free gift of life, which we can pay for it. Now let it's me the grace of God. Wait. Is this related to receiving the spiritual gifts? No, sir. Give life. God gives life. That is grace. God gives life. That is grace. But is it related to receiving spiritual gifts? Is it related? Yeah, but you should be alive before you can receive. Any other gift. Yeah, I know. But there are many things that we need. We need to be alive. We need spiritual life. We need eternal life. We need forgiveness, but these are not directly related. You understand? It has to be directly related to this issue. When you preach, you don't preach from salvation, creation, and, and 
eternal life, heaven, before you go to the topic, you want to go to specifically about receiving, have the motivation to receive spiritual gifts from God. You understand? Okay. Can you think of it? Specifically related to that. Okay, if you cannot, it's okay. But thank you for trying. Thank you for trying. Okay. Now, anyone else? It's okay. You know, then you cannot think of it right away. Let me tell you, it's not easy to learn. Because normal, normally people think like this. Even of teachers, they always think of, okay, what are our needs? Okay, our needs, I come to God, please help me and then I can do it. Or what we have to do. So always think of our needs first. But if we think of God first, it's different. So I'm motivating you, encouraging you to think of God first. Okay, let me share with you what about God that motivates us to hunger for spiritual gifts. God is the gift of all kinds of spiritual gifts and talents. You look at nature, you can see, you can see different kinds of gifts. For instance, you can see the cheetah which can run so fast, the fastest running animal on earth. God can give the talent of running to cheetah. God can give diligence to ants that they can store the food. They're very hard working. Each animal has special gifts, right? And as human, we have some natural gifts already. Humans have the ability to think and understand a lot of things. So these are already natural gifts. And God not only has natural gifts, He has spiritual gifts. That before we were born again, we did not have these spiritual gifts. Before we were born again, we don't have this compassion to help people. We did not know how to do evangelism. We did not know how to care for people. We did not have the infilling of the Holy Spirit. We did not have all the spiritual gifts. That prayer for people to be healed, prayer for people to, for the eyes to open to see, see visions and special dreams. All this, God has the ability. Say it with me. God has all the abilities we need. God has all the spiritual gifts we need. God has all the spiritual gifts we need. If God just gives some to us, that would be a lot already. If God just gives some to us, that would be a lot already. Now, can you see? I start with God. I start with God. God has all the talents. You can look at nature. You can see God's gifts. And to people too. You can see some people good in music. Some people are good in speaking. Some people are good in writing. Some people are good in cooking. Everyone has special gifts because God can give those gifts to anyone. And He can give spiritual gifts because He has all these spiritual gifts. And He is happy with anyone who has a heart to serve God. When you have the heart to serve God, God will give you sufficient spiritual gifts. I thank God He has given me many spiritual gifts. I, you know, I don't say, I'm not saying I deserve it. I don't deserve it. You know, God chose me when I was weak. I don't deserve it. But God is willing to give it to all who hunger for God. I notice that many things, many things God has taught me. God has taught me how to teach. God has taught me how to use my voice well. God has taught me how to understand God's nature, His love. God has taught me how to play the piano and the keyboard and the guitar. I only have lessons for less than a year. But God has given me ways that even piano teachers say, how can you do that? How do you play it? And they try to learn it from me. So I'm saying is that we can have spiritual gifts from God when God knows your heart. So this is when we have the heart of God, then God is very happy to give you spiritual gifts. So first we hunger for God Himself. We hunger for God Himself and then God will give us strong spiritual life and also different kinds of spiritual gifts. Okay? So I hope is this that you would understand this is not too hard. But it takes time to learn. Yeah. It takes time to learn, okay? Yeah, the question. Yes, go ahead. Yeah, meaning we should first get ourselves to God before we can receive this spiritual gift, right? Yes. True. Now, but you don't start with giving yourself to God first. 
Because the ability to give ourselves to God came from God Himself. It's because we see how good God is. He can change people's life. He can give spiritual gifts. He can give opportunities for people to serve God. He has this, all these good qualities first. And then when we understand this and we hunger for God and we want to follow God, then God is very happy and He will pour blessings into that person's life. So, so that obedience came later. First, God's nature. Now when you understand this, you won't worry about ministry because you will say this. God is powerful. Let me ask you this question. Who cares about your ministry more? God. Yes, God cares about your ministry more. Does He want your ministry to be successful and bless many people? Yes. yes, so He wants it. So I don't need to worry. I just say, I need God. I want God. I like God. I want to glorify God. I want to tell people about how wonderful God is. When we do that, God is pleased with you. And then God will change people's life. Now, now I... Now again, I say this to glorify God, not glorify myself. I, you know, I don't deserve this. As I said, God chose me when I was weak, when I had many sins, but God chose me and changed my life. And I want to say this, that, that God can give us the ability beyond our imagination. God can have this plan, all this plan for you before, you all, before we thought about it. That God cares about a church. He wants a church to prosper. So when we trust in God, yes, God, you want the church to go well. And I just trust in you. And then when I speak, I always talk about how good God is. And then some people will be changed even when we are talking. Not only when we pray. When we pray, people can be changed. But when we are talking, when you hear me talking, do you feel, wow, God is so wonderful. I want to believe in God more, trust in God more, and hold on to God more, and get the blessings of God and live out His plan. Do you have this desire? Yes, sir. Because this is the anointing of teaching from God. And I hope that you would say, yes, I want to understand how wonderful God is. So when you read the Bible, look for the goodness of God, His wonderful nature. And then every time you talk, you always talk about the goodness of God. And then people will have more, more motivation to follow God. Let me ask you, are you satisfied with how far you obey God in the past? Are you satisfied with how far you have obeyed God in the past? Do you want to go higher? Yes. Is the motivation from people spanking you? They have to spank you before you obey? No. No. But from yourself, your life is what you have. Your money will one day leave you. Can you take your money to heaven? No. But your life you take to heaven. So if you guard your life, guard your heart and your life and your ministry, all this will stay forever. So isn't that wonderful? Yeah. Something we can keep forever. Do you want to keep forever the best blessings? Yes. So then I hope that your motivation is from God and from inside of you. Then you don't have to have people keep telling you, come, come, come for the training. You don't have to keep, people keep telling you, go serve God, go serve God. But we ourselves have the motivation. Hallelujah. Amen. Is this teaching important to understand God's good nature? Yes. And then every time we talk, we let people know about the good nature of God. Okay? Now, let me uh, ask you now, the motivation for people not to sin, okay? Motivation, how to motivate people not to sin, can you tell me? Think about it, start from God's nature. The motivation, how to motivate people not to sin. Okay, anyone want to say anything? Yes, and if you want to say something, please rush to the front and come and speak quickly. Come quickly and then speak loudly. Very good that you're trying. Very good. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay, you can, <clears throat> you can motivate people to refrain from sinning by telling them the, the reward for doing good, for living for God. 
And that's how you model people. And also by the life that you live yourself. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Now, the one, the first one is is the grace of God. That how God will reward us when we turn away from sin. That is when you do good and then God how will reward you. But the best is to talk about God's nature first. Now remember when I talk about prayer, God knows our needs. God's nature. He knows our needs. He cares for us. He wants to provide for us. So that nature first. And then when we pray, He's happy to give us. Now this is two different things. Let me explain again. His nature of goodness, of generosity, that's and his ability to provide us his nature. And then when we pray, he'll give to us. That's the second level. So when we want to talk about uh, the grace of God, first about his own nature. Okay? So about giving up sin. So let me try. Yes, okay. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Yeah. First name. I'm talking to the sister now. Sister, God love you. God have a wonderful plan for your life. God want you to enjoy eternity. He even have heaven available for you. Uh, what for you? Heaven. He has heaven available for you. Okay. But the only way you can enter there is by turning away from your sin. If you turn from your sin, what God have for you, you will surely inherit it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for trying. And then what you said, uh, that first is truly is the grace of God. That His salvation for you, His plan for you, His heaven for you, that it's, it's true. And then you turn away from sin. That's what your obedience. Okay? Okay. Anyone else want to say anything more? Yes? Good that you try. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. If I want to motivate someone to turn away from their sins, I will start by saying, God is a holy God. And His nature is holy. He is clean. He is sinless. And all righteousness begins with God. And God wants you to live a holy and a clean life so that He can be able to, to communicate with you at all times. He also wants to save you. So if you, if you submit to Him, He can make your life as clean as His life is. And reach on from there. Okay. <laughs> Okay, thank you, thank you. Now, that, it, I should talk about that holiness of God, and then, uh, now that is God's nature. That's God's nature. But we want to explain the holiness of God so that people can see that it's beautiful and wonderful. And then, um, okay, I, I want to say this. When we talk about motivate people to go away, you know, to turn away from sin, we can talk about how beautiful God's holiness is. Now, God's holiness is majestic. It's most high. It's even the angels, the angels, and they stand in front of God. The seraphim, they have to cover their head, the face, and the, the feet that they could not look at the glory of God. So God is full of glory and His holiness. And I want to say this too. God's holiness is very beautiful. It's something to be desired because when one day we go to heaven, when you see the Christians there, some of these Christians might have hurt you on earth. Have some Christians hurt you on earth? But when you go to heaven, when you see them, will they still continue to dislike you? No. When they see you in heaven, they say, I'm so happy to see you. And they, they're excited to see you. So in heaven, there's no more resentment, no more anger. So heaven is beautiful. I'm using human terms to describe the goodness of God. Now actually, to describe the grace of God, we can use human terms so people can understand better. In heaven, there is no more resentment, no more 
remembering the faults of people, it's always forgiveness and goodness and kindness there. Let me ask you, compare. On earth, is it like that? No way. In your home and in the church, sometimes people are not happy with us. So we see God's holiness is very beautiful. The first of all is, God give us the holiness when we trust in Jesus as our Savior. That we are called righteous, we are made righteous by Jesus Christ. So that's a free gift, that's also grace of God. But also, another thing is, God doesn't like sin, now this is law. God hates sin. And any sin will destroy our relationship with God and take away blessings, and also can open the way to Satan to attack. And any moment we obey God and forsake sin and give up sins, God is very happy to bless us. And God will reward this person and bless this person. So notice that I will start with first how beautiful the holiness of God is. And then do you want that holy, holiness in your home? If you have this holiness at home, it will be very beautiful. No more fighting, no more quarreling. If you have it in the church, the church is all united and they all love God. Isn't that beautiful? So we know that God's holiness is beautiful and also sins are destructive. And God give us a strength. That's the motivation too. God give us a strength. And the more we live in holiness, the more God will bless us and give us more strength. So think of different ways how you can describe God's grace so that people are motivated to follow God. And, and, and I use this to summarize, to say this. A Christian, now sometimes even pastors, they try to serve God but they want to glorify themselves. They work very hard. They work very hard to have results. Even they have results. Is God happy with them? If he has pride, if he wants to just build up his kingdom, he wants people to honor him, if he has this heart, does God like it? And his work, a lot of it's waste, right? So, if you want to serve God and then we have sin at the same time it's destroying what we are doing right do you want to destroy it or do you want it to be enlarged when we love God and obey God what we do will be enlarged by God and God will reward us so I'm using different ways to emphasize on the grace of God and first is his beautiful nature his holiness and he'll give this holiness to us and heaven is beautiful and we can live in the beauty the beauty of this holiness and then when we are holy we live in a holy life God is very happy and will bless us and the destructiveness of sins so I use different ways gospel and the law to motivate people you want to say something? Yeah. if I want to motivate the sinner to come to Christ, I'll begin by asking some interesting questions. Okay. Like, have you heard about heaven before? Have you? Heard about heaven. Heard about heaven. Yeah. Okay. If the person says yes, I say, I say heaven is a beautiful place. Okay. Heaven is a place where the streets are made of gold. Mm -hmm. Have you seen any country or any place? Uh -huh. The roads are paved with gold? Uh -huh. Say no. I say wow. Heaven is a place. Okay. There's no death there. Okay. That's okay. No, you don't need current. You don't need electricity. Okay. Because it's a beautiful place. Would you like to be in that place? You say yes. And I will say, those that will be in that place are going to have a relationship with God. I will ask, would you like to have a good relationship with God? The person will say yes. Then I will not introduce the message of salvation the times that can lead to that heaven. If you want to make heaven, you must hate what God hates. You must love what God loves. God wants you to give your life to Him so it can be the center point of your life. Allow Jesus to come into your life as your personal Lord and Savior. From there, when He responds, then I can make Him to uh, confess his sin, the sinner's prayers, and are leading to Christ. Okay, thank you. Okay, so here he is talking about bringing someone to Jesus. And he used that um, 
heaven has street of gold. Yeah. Um, this is good that you use heaven. Let people know about heaven. And I want to say this. Street of gold is attractive to some people. But people are more attracted to qualities that are related to human. Human qualities. What qualities in heaven would attract people that they understand more? Because they say a lot of gold, some people may not think is very special. So what are some qualities in heaven that would attract people? Anyone? Thank you. No sickness in heaven. No sickness. No sickness, okay. No That's death. one area. Very good. No death. No death. Okay. What else? You don't get old in heaven anymore. No one get old in heaven. No one get old, okay? There will be no more pain. No more pain. No okay. more sorrow. No more sorrow. You have eternal life. Okay. Okay. That's this is good. Let me ask you, what affects more people? in their life and what gives people more joy in their life you want to use this most important things to people to attract people to God the most important things that people desire uh -huh. yes one is shelter so if I make them to understand that there is a mansion that Jesus said in my father's house there are many mansions mansions a place to live a place to live okay yeah. so a place to live okay we struggle here for a place to live okay there, there will be no struggle okay <laughs> anything else yeah you yeah. can tell about the peace peace, peace. peace. okay peace so, okay when, when jesus gave you peace that peace is for forever okay and no one gave you peace on earth he said god gave you peace okay so when you have peace you have joy okay you have happiness okay your own life now these are more central to people. Now why? Even when people have a big house, they might not be happy. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Even if they have a lot of gold, they might not be happy. You want to meet the needs of people in their hearts. That's the most important. Mm -hmm. But we, I'm going to explain it to say, you need to show the contrast, the opposite of it to show the importance of that. I, uh, I'm going to explain first before the other people can respond, okay? Okay. When we want to explain, actually the most central need of people is love. Most, love. The most important is love. love. And then how can we show love? How can we let people think about love? It's to use the opposite. We can ask people like this, a question like that. Have you been hurt by people? Do you find your family member really care about your needs and your feelings? Do they say things that make you happy? Or sometimes they say things that hurt you? So many people have this experiences or have, having been hurt by people. But then we can explain to them, Jesus is the one that can give you love. Even on earth here, when you have Jesus, you can be satisfied in the heart. And then now for people, this is very vague. So we can explain how we experience the love of God. I can experience the love of God and joy of God and which I never explained. Let me tell you this, my, for myself, when I was young, I hardly ever laugh. Because in my home I was always beating and yelling. But it was after I became a Christian that I experienced the joy. And then after I experienced the Holy Spirit and then I have the fullness of joy. And I could experience the great love of God. So now I know the taste of heaven. But before that, I didn't understand. And many people live their life like this. A lot of hard work. Unhappy. Are you like that? Do you want to live every day happily? Now, but it's also sad with, if they say, how come not all the Christians are happy? We have to say, I'm sorry about that. It's true that some Christians are not joyful. But we can actually live out this joy of the Lord and be filled with the joy of the Lord. And I hope all, more people can have the joy of the Lord and people around you will like it. So with this central needs of people and also use negative, the opposite, to contrast the positive. It's very hard. You can ask this question. When you are in, in need of money, 
how many people will really lend you some money in this world? How many people will really lend you some money in this world? If you are in short of money, some people it's hard to find anyone who is willing to lend any money. Sure. When they are lonely, is there someone who is willing to spend time with you, to care about you? So in this world, it's hard to find people who are nice to us. But God can care about you and satisfy your soul that you can, when you praise God, you can experience His joy and love and be filled, will be free. And then in heaven, it's even stronger than that. Mm -hmm. So that way, it's more attractive to keep your people, right? Yeah. And for some people who are sick, health will be a great attraction. That in heaven, you won't be tired anymore. You won't be sleepy anymore. You don't sleep anymore. You don't need to sleep at all. Mm -hmm. You'll be full of energy and always full of joy, always full of happiness and good health. Mm -hmm. So we can, and use, when you describe this, describe it with feelings. Now you notice I describe many of these things with feeling. You know, I, how I describe the joy of the Lord, hallelujah, praise the Lord. Because I'm free in the Holy Spirit. I hope you learn this too. This is part of my...